The president's honeymoon period has long been over, and with just days left before Congress goes into recess, the dealmaker in chief still hasn't passed any legislation with their help. The GOP health care plan was supposed to be President Trump's first chance to flex his governing muscle, but it was killed by its own party members. Now he's dealing with a Supreme Court struggle, and hopes for tax reform seem even further away. As we close in on the end of the Trump administration's rocky first 100 days, what happens next for the president and Congress. Robert Draper reported on President Trump and Congress for the New York Times Magazine. He joins me now from Washington. Robert, thanks for joining us. My pleasure, Elaine. So many people in the president's inner circle don't have governing or legislative experience, as you pointed out. Is that primarily why the president may be having a difficult time getting Congress on his side? Well, that's a factor, Elaine, certainly, but there are others. I mean, it, uh, he's, he has um, a Republican majority in both the House and the Senate, and yet, uh, you know, these guys have been, uh, they've been out of practice when it comes to passing legislation. And, and uh, uh, on top of that, uh, on top of the fact that uh, there has never been a consensus formed on some of these major issues, such as uh, Obamacare, sure, they all wanted to repeal it, but precisely what they would rep replace it with, it was something that, despite the fact that they've had seven years to to, uh, to think this through, they never really, um, you know, coalesced around a particular plan for. Uh, the same is likely to be the case with tax reform, which is going to be the next item in their agenda, and infrastructure as well. So it's uh, it's not going to get any easier, to be frank. Well, do you think it's likely the president will make it to his 100th day without passing any major legislation? I do, actually, yes. I mean, there is a, uh, there is a flurry right now um, on Capitol Hill to see if they can get an Obamacare replacement measure passed before Easter. I just don't think that's likely. After all, um, uh, we know the Democrats won't vote for it. But we haven't even come in, uh, we haven't even factored in the Senate. And, and uh, there are a number of uh, moderate Republican senators who have already declared that they're not going to vote for a measure that cuts out expansion to Medicaid. And uh, so I, given that and given the heavy lift that tax reform is likely to be, yes, I'd say that the, the odds are very good that they'll go through the first 100 days without a major legislate, uh, legislative measure to President Trump's name. Well, in your piece, you talked to conservatives about traditional Republican uh, conservative policies. What did they say about whether they feel the president is a quote-unquote true conservative? What they said is that um, he may well not be, uh, that they view him more as a populist than a conservative, but frankly, they don't care as long as conservative measures get passed, that they don't care what he calls himself. But, I mean, that does give rise to a lot of questions. The, this populism or economic nationalism in the parlance of President Trump's top advisor, Steve Bannon, um, uh, is conservative from certain angles. But then when you get to say something like infrastructure, uh, which could involve um, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars in, in federal revenue being spent, when it comes to um, uh, other measures, including tax reform, uh, where uh, the, uh, there will be more of an emphasis on an import tax, something that a lot of uh, Republicans are against, uh, that there will be a renegotiation of trade deals. Uh, these are things that make a lot of conservatives unsettled. And so it's one of the major reasons why he's had a very combative relationship thus far, particularly with the so-called House Freedom Caucus, uh, the Republican conservatives in the House. Yeah, well, where else, uh, Robert, do you see possible friction points? You pointed out some of those um, sticking points potentially between the Trump administration and traditional conservatives. But for instance, on the issue of entitlement reform, you asked the president about that. What did he say? I did. You know, I, I've said that um, from what I could understand from talking to Steve Bannon, from talking to other advisors, that anybody in the uh, uh, House Republican conference who was hopeful that entitlement reform would happen under his watch probably should not hold their breath. And his answer to that was, I think you're right. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve Bannon and said to me as well that he thought it very unlikely uh, that uh, something like that would happen under his watch. And this is of great concern to House conservatives who believe that ultimately you cannot bring the budget to balance. Ultimately, you cannot cut into the growing American debt without addre addressing entitlements. And yet President Trump has been quite consistent about this, both as a candidate on the uh, campaign trail and in his basic lack of appetite that he's shown for it while he's been president. But at the same time, then, how does this Trump administration work with people in Congress? Uh, some of them, as you noted, the House Freedom Caucus, uh, are conservatives who look at these issues and say, this is the very philosophy that we believe in that we don't think is a negotiating point when it comes to, uh, for instance, reining in spending, when it comes to tackling the, the debt. Uh, we are not moving on these issues. And here you have the Trump administration looking at things like spending money on this infrastructure uh, uh, projects, uh, things that are 
anathema in some quarters uh, for these fiscal conservatives. No, that's right, Elaine. And I think going in, the prevailing philosophy by the Trump administration, by uh, folks like Steve Bannon, was that Trump was so popular in these conservative districts that ultimately uh, those Republicans would have to be brought to heel. They would uh, face consequences at home if they didn't vote for whatever the president was promulgating. Now, the Obamacare debacle uh, gave the lie to that. And so I think that they are having to find their footing now uh, and dealing with House conservatives. We have seen President Trump go to Twitter and uh, threaten to primary uh, certain members of them, uh, saying that they would uh, face consequences in 2018. But he's going to need them for certain measures. For that matter, he's going to need certain Democrats uh, for trade negotiations. Um, that's going to require a two-thirds vote in the Senate. He'll need Democrats for that uh, and um, possibly for other measures, uh, say military measures, that uh, Republicans may be loath to support. So what the president has to do is figure out a way to build coalitions. Uh, and, you know, there's still plenty of time. And, and this 100 days thing is an artificial construct. Uh, it's not going to be how history measures the president. He could well be successful, but he's got to, as I say, figure out a way to build coalitions. And thus far, he's had a rocky, t uh, a rocky time of it. I know we only have about 30 seconds left, but you mentioned Democrats. Will Democrats, you think, actually be willing to work with the Trump administration? Is that a realistic possibility? The president has talked about it. Yeah, yeah, it's a great question, Elaine, and we really don't know because after the uh, health care failure, uh, Democrats may be tempted to just let this administration twist in the wind. On the other hand, they would like at least some of them to get things done. They think that infrastructure would be a likely thing that they could play on. Some of them, of course, are Democrats who are from vulnerable uh, districts or in, in states that um, President Trump won in 2016, and they're coming up next year. So we may see some Democratic support, but it really, I think, depends on tax reform and how the president and does with that uh, part of his agenda. All right, Robert Draper in Washington. Really fascinating piece, a peek behind the curtain there. Appreciate your insights. Thank you. My pleasure. Sure.